Hey everybody, I just got a text from TJ on my new T-Mobile sidekick. He says it's time we finally complete the holy trinity of reality show fact marathons. So, grab your bananas, sit back, and enjoy 265 facts about MTV's The Challenge. Now this is my favorite game every season. <laughs> the first season of The Challenge wasn't really at all like The Challenge today. There were only five contestants, all from the real world, and they didn't compete in eliminations or anything like that, and they went on a typical road rules adventure. Everyone won, and the prize was that each person won a trip for two to Costa Rica. It is also the only season without the word challenge in its name. The second season, called the Real World Road Rules Challenge, was the real start to the format of people competing against one another. The winners of this challenge only took home $6,613 each. To put this into perspective, Jay and Teresa just took home $6,000 each for winning a daily challenge on Double Agents. The fifth season of the show, Battle of the Seasons, was the first time that players were to be eliminated, which was done through a vote-off system. It was also the first time that the show wasn't a 6 versus 6 team format. Baloo brought her infant child along with her to live in the challenge household. Throughout Battle of the Sexes, contestants would accumulate points based on how well they did in missions, and the three men and women with the highest points each episode would become the inner circle and choose who to vote out. Colin Mortensen, despite never winning any missions, always had enough points to be in the inner circle every single time and went on to win the final challenge. Blair was to receive the lifesaver in episode 13, which would have kept him safe from being voted out. However, he refused to take it because he didn't feel like he deserved it since he had the lowest amount of points of all the men left, and he was then eliminated. The seventh season, The Gauntlet, was basically the first season to introduce consistent eliminations where the loser would be sent home. The Gauntlet had nine people win, tied for the most of any season. In The Gauntlet, only two players won more than one elimination. Kara Zavaletto won two, and Sarah Grayson won five. They are also the only two players of the nine winners that won an elimination. Battle of the Sexes 2 was the only time that Mike the Miz Mizanin was ever eliminated, as he made it to the finals the other four times that he played. CT won the lifesaver six times on the Inferno 2, but never used a single one. What's the CT? <laughs> CT wins the life shield, and that means I am going in. Mike the Miz was nominated to go into the Inferno three times, but was saved by the lifesaver every single time. Landed was the only good guy to win in an elimination that season, which he did twice. All four winners of the Inferno 2 won their rookie seasons. Mike and Darrell had previously won on their first seasons, and this was Landon and Jamie Chung's challenge debut. Jamie Murray was mistakenly cast as a rookie on the Gauntlet 2, even though he had previously been on, and won, two seasons. On Fresh Meat, the 12 new players not from the real world or road rules did a multi-challenged obstacle course to give the veterans an idea of what they were made of before deciding on who their partner would be. One of the challenges was called Up and Over, and 11 of the 12 finished this section in under 60 seconds. The only person who didn't, Casey Cooper, took 8 minutes and 59 seconds. Another one of the challenges was a brain teaser puzzle. It took Ryan Kehoe over 22 minutes to solve the puzzle. Aviv Mamed did it in 3 seconds. Wes Bergman and Casey Cooper, both of whom were rookies, were sent to the first four eliminations and won all of them, which no rookie has ever been able to match. They eventually were sent to a fifth elimination and won that too. Let's go. No, seriously, pick it up. Let's go. It's a puzzle. Come on, get your head up. Let's go. Darrell Taylor was finally sent into an elimination for the first time on Fresh Meat. This was after he had already won three seasons. He went on to win the elimination against Derek and Diem and then continued on to win the season, his fourth consecutive win. At the Fresh Meat reunion, it was revealed that Casey spent her third place winnings on breast implants, Wes spent his third place winnings on Johanna, and Kenny spent his second place winnings on a wrestling ring. I really don't give a back on the tags out. I'll give it a shot, but if it's too much, I'm gonna say it. Casey Cooper and Evelyn Smith were both 18 at the time of filming Fresh Meat. Nine of the 12 Fresh Meat competitors have reached a final at some point in their careers. Coincidentally, nine of the 12 alumni players have also reached a final at some point in their careers. The duel only had four people run the final total, the fewest of any season. Out of his eight seasons, the duel is the only season that Kenny Santucci didn't make the final. Big Easy is the only man that competed on the duel that has never won the challenge. Two of the eventual winners of the Inferno 3 were almost not there. 
Derek was brought in as a replacement for CT after he was disqualified for punching Davis before the game started, and Abram was thought to have lost an elimination against Timmy, but Timmy actually missed one pane of glass he was supposed to break, and therefore the win was awarded to Abram by default. Abram and Derek were the only two of the six winners of the season to win an elimination. Not obscured, but definitely notable enough to talk about, the veteran team beat the rookie team in the final challenge on the Gauntlet 3, but were disqualified because midway through the final, Big Easy collapsed and was sent to a hospital. TJ explained that a team would only win the Army Strong final challenge if each player was present at the end. Therefore, the rookies won the final by default. At the reunion, it was revealed that only Brad, Coral, and Katie were still friends with Big Easy after the season, with Brad being the only one of the nine finalists disqualified because of Big Easy to still be friends with him. Wes lost his first elimination ever in the ruins to Kahuta, finally tarnishing his 8-0 elimination record. What a little bitch! I can't wait to beat the out of you! Oh no my god. To try and make oh amends. Oh god, you're such a bitch. You're such a bitch! <laughs> you, bro, dude, are you... Darrell likely would have won his fifth consecutive season had he not smashed Brad's face in. For some reason, in the elimination between Susie and Kimberly, they put a sprinkler on to make it look like it was raining because they thought it would look cooler. Also, not obscure, but the Ruins final has to be the most lopsided final challenge in all of challenge history on paper. The champions team had five players, including Bananas, Kenny, and Evan, each coming off of a win, Derek coming off of back-to-back -back wins, and Susie Meister, who has never not made it to a final. The challengers team consisted of two women, Kellyanne Judd and Sarah Rice, who had a grand total of one season played before the Ruins. However, Kellyanne and Sarah were quite close to beating them in the final, which would have just been... Oh, some great icing on top of the cake. Similar to the first Fresh Meet, Fresh Meet 2 had all of the new contestants participate in a combine of sorts so the alumni could use the stats to determine their partners. Out of the four different events, the eventual winner, Carly Johnson, placed in the bottom three for all of the events. For the guys on this season, the first person to pick their partner was Darrell Taylor, and he came in last on the season. The last person to pick was Landon, and he came in first on the season. I'm super glad that no one else picked my partner, and she was yeah, left up there pick. for me, but nobody knew that she was actually going to be my first pick. There were only three weeks where Kenny and Laurel didn't win a daily or an elimination during Fresh Meat 2. On Cutthroat, Laurel drunkenly made harsh comments towards Big Easy about his body image, and although she apologized after the season, Eric was unsatisfied with it because she didn't apologize in person when it happened, and instead did it through MTV.com after it aired. You're calling somebody out for no reason that you don't even know me. Brad was the only member of the winning team to not win an elimination during the season. During Banana's backpack, Bananas only lasted 19 seconds against CT, but Tyler Duckworth actually lasted over 40 minutes against CT, but they edited it down to look like it was around 20 seconds to make it more dramatic. Tyler, we get it. You're a fat bastard, and CT can't pull you through the mud. Great. Congratulations, dude. Oh! Evelyn Smith was the only one of the four winners on Rivals that didn't originate from the real world Key West. All four runners up on Rivals all originated from a Fresh Meat season. Laurel and Cara Maria debuted on Fresh Meat 2, Kenny came from the original Fresh Meat, and Wes, although considered an alumni, was a rookie on the original Fresh Meat as well. Both Adams on Rivals have been DQ'd for physical violence at some point in their careers. Hey, 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 Adam. Oh! Hey, Adam. I'm wide open. Is that it? That sucks. Come on, bro. You know he wanted you to do that. It's fun. I get to sit back and watch everybody else fight for once. Madness is everywhere, and it's not me. Because of Adam R getting disqualified for punching Ty in the face before the first elimination, Leroy was able to get a replacement partner in Michael Ross from their season of the Real World Box Vegas. Ironically, considering that the season theme was rivals, Leroy and Michael were good friends. Rivals was the first season to not feature any challengers from Road Rules, which marks the beginning of the era that has started to detach itself from the original concept of the challenge being the real world versus Road Rules. It's very heavily rumored that Adam K threw the last challenge before the final after making a deal with Johnny and Kenny to split some of the money if they won. Although there's no proof of it, it's definitely something to think about, especially since Evan and Kenny have been very open about how they split the money they win every season. Even still, CT almost single-handedly won the elimination matchup. I've never been hit that hard in my entire life. I feel like I just hit a freight train going a thousand miles per hour. On Battle of the X's, there were three occasions where a team was sent into elimination twice in a row. 
All three times, the team won the first elimination, but lost the second one. During Zach and CJ's Hall Brawl elimination on Battle of the Seasons 2012, CJ won three rounds and Zach only won two, but because of the way the sets were played, Zach won the elimination for his team. Of the six teams that made it to the finals on Rivals 2, the eventual top three teams never won an elimination, while the bottom three teams each won two eliminations. When looking at the two teams who won the season, being CT and Wes and Emily and Paula, there was only one week out of the 12 weeks, including the finals, that neither team won the daily challenge. I'm not counting the week before the final though, because the men did not compete that week. Rivals 2 was the last time the reunion show was held live, as it was a total disaster. CT kept talking back to Johnny Mosley to the point where Mosley was just speechless and didn't know what to say at times. Things would get awkward. The rest of the cast was just uncooperative as well. And Knight slapped Frank right in the face. Side note, when I say solo form that season, I mean that there was a solo winner and not a team. Free Agents is the only solo format season where the man and woman who won the most eliminations also won the season. All five men that won an elimination and didn't make it to the finals on Free Agents went home the episode after winning their elimination. The only exception is Frank, kind of, as he won back-to-back eliminations before being medevaced in the third episode. He still follows the rule of being sent out after winning an elimination, though. I've won quite a few eliminations in my time, none more gratifying than that. That pompous little arrogant bitch asked for it, and I brought the thunder. Only three players on free agents never went into eliminations because they never drew the kill card. These three players were Nani Gonzalez, Devin Simone, and Johnny Riley. Nani survived the kill card draw four times, the odds of which being only 18%. Devin survived the kill card draw five times with the odds being only 10%. Johnny Portland survived the kill card draw seven times. The odds of Johnny Portland surviving all seven of his kill card draws is literally only 1%. On season 27, Battle of the Bloodlines, after the first week, Cara Maria won a competition every single episode slash round. She won seven straight daily challenges, then won two straight eliminations before finally winning the final. Corey Wharton won eight straight daily challenges on this season, which is the record for most consecutive daily wins. Tony seemingly shook himself up pretty badly during a daily challenge on Bloodlines, and he went to the hospital, but they told him that everything was fine. After coming back, he seemed to be okay at first, but then he turned a sickly green color before passing out on his way to an elimination round. He was rushed back to the hospital, where they discovered that Tony had actually ruptured his spleen and had to have an emergency surgery to remove it. He supposedly lost around four pints of blood, and had he waited one more day before getting medical treatment, he likely wouldn't have made it. Wes and Nani were the only team on Rivals 3 to win more than one elimination. Bananas and Sarah were the only team to win more than one daily, which they did four times. After Devin and Cheyenne came back after being eliminated, they were safe for one round before being sent into the jungle six straight times. However, they pulled the White Skull every single time which kept them safe. The odds that they pulled the White Skull every time was 1%. Those are some Johnny Portland numbers. Let's just light these people up. I need to make a little bit of a splash because chances are I'm going to be right back in that jungle every week. I'm sending you in. You're done. 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 All of you are out. Should you be home right now? Yeah, I should be home, but they brought me back so I could beat Wes's ass. Rivals 3 was the first season since season 11 to not have any of the original players from Fresh Meat or Fresh Meat 2. Laurel Stucky, after debuting on season 11, Fresh Meat, won nine straight eliminations and didn't receive her first elimination loss until season 29, Invasion of the Chance against Camilla. Of all the players on Dirty 30, only Derek, Camilla, and Tori were never eliminated. Jordan Wisely, the male winner of Dirty 30, is also the only player to ever be eliminated in a season, earn their way back in, and win. Dirty 30 was supposed to be TJ's last season, and he was going to become a fireman. However, he realized it wasn't what he really wanted and continued to be the host of the show after the season ended. You know how I feel about quitters, right? Yeah. I quit, bro. Damn it. You're done. Oh, well. TJ hates me now. It's well known that Jordan literally broke his leg after crash landing from skydiving before the final even started, and it is still mind-blowing to me that even on his broken leg, he ran the entire final in one against two other challenge legends in Derek and CT. But someone who we must not forget about is the professional who was with Jordan during the crash landing, as he also broke his arm during the fall. Hope he's doing okay. The first and only draw in an elimination occurred in Vendettas, when Nelson competed against the mercenary Durrell and remained in a deadlock for the entirety of both rounds. Since Durrell was a mercenary and not actually in the game, production thought it would be acceptable to call it a draw, since it wasn't required that someone be sent home that round. A draw is not a loss, I'll take it. I mean, the dude deserves to be here. He put up a hell of a fight, man, and I tip my head off to him. Nelson is the real deal now. 
In Vendettas, Eddie withdrew from the game prior to the Who's Got Balls challenge. However, his departure was not addressed on screen, and it was not revealed why he departed from the game. During the airing of the episode, Corey revealed via Twitter that Alicia allegedly had a restraining order against him. On an Instagram Live, Sylvia revealed that Eddie opted to leave the house rather than have his name dragged through the mud over the situation. I'm also pretty sure that Eddie did not have a single confessional ever on the challenge, which is pretty odd. Dara Kaczynski, Kellyanne Judd, and Corey Brooks from Big Brother 18 were all flown to Spain as alternates, but they were sent back home after being unused. They didn't bring Derek back, though, as a mercenary against Joss in Episode 7 and 8. Kyle Christie, who came in third place on the season, received less prize money than Kayla Casillas, who came in fourth. Ashley and Hunter, the winners of Final Reckoning, didn't even enter the game until Episode 7. Joss and Sylvia were the only pair to remain in the main house the entire season. Devin was supposed to be partnered up with Johnny Bananas for Final Reckoning and flew out to South Africa to compete, but after learning that his father died, Devin flew back home and Tony took his spot as Bananas' partner. In Final Reckoning, the final elimination between Tony and Bananas versus Polly and Natalie was actually filmed twice. You can see the first elimination setup was different than what was actually shown, as it was in the background when TJ was sharing the rules. It was rumored that Tony's Bananas were quite close to winning the first one, but it was shut down for some reason, either being an equipment problem or because Tony was throwing up blood. Then they had to come back the next day where the elimination that was shown on the season played out, this time with Polly and Natalie winning. Wow! I feel so much better! <laughs> Turbo and Cara Maria were the only two players to make it past the first episode and never see an elimination round on War of the Worlds. Devon won the most eliminations of any player this season, with three. On War of the Worlds, the two players from mainline Big Brother US, who were never eliminated from their original shows, Josh Martinez and Liz Nolan, both were eliminated at the very first challenge they competed in. I'm Big Brother, season 19 winner. I don't back down, I hold my ground, and I fight for what I want. If anyone's in my way, uh, they're because I'm playing no games this season. Oh, Josh! Oh, Josh! Josh, we love you! Okay. I feel angry, I want to punch somebody, I want to cry, I want to, I'm, I'm just, overall, just, I feel like Polly Calafiore's brother Cody, who is the runner-up on Big Brother 16 and winner of Big Brother All-Stars 2, was on the cast for War of the Worlds but dropped out last minute. Cody's fellow Big Brother castmate Zach Rance was on the cast list as well before switching him to an alternate shortly before the season started, where Zach then demanded to be taken off the cast list as he was in the mindset of needing to know for certain if he was going to be on and had other stuff going on that he could be taken care of. There's unaired footage of Johnny Bananas, Theo Campbell, and Kyle Christie using tape to cover Amanda Garcia's mouth shut and tying her up against her will after an argument. Both Polly Calafiore and Davon Rogers called the incident very disturbing. Arguments and little tip for tat about this happened 17 seasons ago. Oh, mate, you should have seen what happened 54 seasons ago. No, mate, get over it. You're going to vote for him regardless. On War of the Worlds 2, only four of the 12 players in the final won an elimination. Jordan and Tori each won two. Ninja Natalie won an elimination early in the season against Laurel, based on a somewhat technicality, but I digress. And Ashley Mitchell won the final elimination against Nani to secure her spot in the final. It was this type of play style of the top dogs continuously throwing in the same people, which likely resulted in the skull twist scene in the next two seasons. Ninja was the only player who won an elimination during the first nine episodes and made it to the finale. CT and Rogan did not win a single thing the entire season, up until they won the final daily challenge. Similarly, D did not win a single thing the entire season except for one daily challenge in the fourth episode. All three of these players ended up winning the season. That means that of the four winners of the season, three of them had zero eliminations to their name and only one daily win. To put things into perspective, Josh won two dailies this season. Josh Martinez. War of the Worlds 2 is the first season without any American rookies. It is also the first season since season 22 to not feature any rookies in the final. War of the Worlds 2 was originally called Bloody Hell. Both D and Jordan have confirmed that during the War of the Worlds 2 final, Team UK was roughly 20 to 30 minutes ahead of Team US, but production made Team UK stop before starting their puzzle until Team US caught up a bit and was in sight in order to make the final look like it was a closer race. On Total Madness, Jetta was the only player to be in the tribunal and volunteer to go into purgatory and win. CT, Wes, Nani, and Josh all sent themselves in and lost. 
D, who is basically invisible in the edit due to some brash comments about Black Lives Matter in the beginning of when the season was airing, won the most daily challenges at four, but was given almost no time on screen at all during tribunals and deliberations, making it seem like there were some big holes in story logic at times. There is a rumor that Total Madness was supposed to only have one overall winner, not a male winner and a female winner. Based on spoiler accounts, as well as some statements made by Swaggy C and Kyle, Paired with the fact that the season was initially called the Battle for Independence, shows that there is a lot that supports this rumor. If the rumor is true, this means that Jenny West was supposed to be the only winner of the season, but production changed things after the fact, and Kyle claims that they had to reshoot a segment of the final, which he claims is how Bananas won. There are also many statements about how the season was rigged for Bananas to win, but I'll leave that up to you if you choose to believe it or not. You know I had that run where I just took it for granted. I'm like, I'm gonna make it to a final every season, I'm gonna win every season. And then I went on that dry spell. The games got harder, the finals got harder, the competitions got harder, I got older. On Double Agents, Leroy and CT were the only two people to throw themselves into elimination after winning the daily. They both won their matchups. Seven players quit slash were disqualified on Double Agents, the most ever. After Fessy won his second daily in a row and made a comment about winning the whole thing, he lost 14 dailies in a row and then came in last in the final after giving up on Casey. Go ahead, Fessy. Start eating. Go ahead, Beth. Pussy. Drink that. <laughs> Tastes good. Corey had eight different partners throughout Double Agents, with only Cam surviving to the end of the game. Devin was the only player to win an elimination and then immediately win the next daily challenge. Again, this is just a rumor, but just like in the prior season, it is speculated that the season was set up for CT to win. Nani stated in an Instagram Live that when it was down to five guys left and she had to pick between Kyle and CT as her partner, production basically forced her to pick Kyle so CT would have a guaranteed pass to the final as the rogue agent. Double Agents had the first elimination matchup be for the women, the first time that has happened since Rivals won 15 seasons prior. Back as fast as possible. Oh, and by the way, the whole thing's gonna be set on fire. What? So you better do it fast. Now that we've gotten through all of the seasons for the most part, let's look into some facts about the players. I apologize in advance, but just get ready for a whole lot of Johnny Bananas. Johnny Bananas made it to the finals on all three rival seasons. His average placement on these seasons would be 1.33 as he won twice and got second the other time. Bananas has won 62 daily challenges across his career, the most ever. Wes has the most elimination wins of any competitor, with 14. He's lost 9 times, though. Cara Maria has won 13 eliminations, the most for any woman. She has only lost 6 eliminations. Bananas has been in 24 different eliminations, the most of any player, but has lost 14 times. Compare that to C2, who has only been in 11 eliminations, with his record being 6-5. and five. It's crazy that he has played in less than half the eliminations that Johnny has, but played in just 2 less seasons than Bananas. CT has been sent home without formally losing an elimination four times, the most of any contestant. CT is the only player to win two challenge spinoffs. Devin Walker, the self-proclaimed layup, is four and two in eliminations. To put this into perspective, Zach Nichols, known for his gigantic muscles and also being kind of a dickhead, is four and five in eliminations. I'm winning this show! You, Leroy, eat my ass! Oh, Leroy, you're salty, aren't you, baby? I'm the man! On Josh Martinez's first season, he won one daily challenge. On his second season, he won two dailies. On his third season, he won three dailies. And on his fourth season, he won zero. But he won his first elimination. Also, Josh has only played on four seasons, but has been eliminated five times. After losing to Bananas in the Wrecking Wall elimination in Free Agents, Jordan went on to win three challenges in a row that he competed on, being X's 2, Dirty 30, and War of the Worlds 2. For competitors that have played on more than five seasons, Jordan has the highest overall winning percentage, winning 50% of the seasons he's played on. Bananas and CT are the only competitors to win in four different types of formats. A multi-person team, a male-male duo, a male-female duo, and an individual win. Jordan has also won in a team, duo, and solo format. Bananas is the only player to win an individual final twice, in free agents and in total madness. Leroy holds the worst finals record of any male, being 0-5 in the finals. Corey is right behind him though at 0-4 in the finals. Every cast member from the real world Las Vegas 2011, Boston, New Orleans, and Austin would compete on the challenge. 
Darrell Taylor is known for winning his first four seasons of the challenge, which is both absurd and a record for most consecutive challenge wins. Darrell avoided 33 eliminations in a row before being sent in for the first time on his fourth season, which is also a record. I'm gonna tell you right now, if there's anything with heights, I'm gonna lose. Johnny Bananas and Cara Maria have opposite finals records. They have each been to nine, with Bananas being seven and two and Cara Maria being two and seven. CT has also been to nine finals and has a respectable four and five record. Five different women have competed on the challenge while pregnant. Melissa Reeves made it all the way to the finals before production and Melissa figured it out. We were cool. I don't even know who you are. Don't name one to me. Don't name one to me. Don't name one to me. You annoying twist. Jay is the only rookie on a solo format season to be sent into the first three eliminations he was eligible for. Jamie Murray has only played three times on the challenge and has won every single time. Lots of challenge legends were eliminated first on their rookie seasons, such as Evelyn Smith, Kaya Maria, Johnny Bananas, and of course, Josh Martinez. Abram made it to the final on all three Inferno seasons. Side note, Abram branded himself. Kenny Santucci made it to the finals on six consecutive appearances, the most by a male contestant. Kaya Maria has made it to the finals on five consecutive appearances, the most by a female contestant. This streak is currently active. Let's take a minute to talk about King Chet. He was sent home first twice, medevaced once, and only doing okay on a team season. Still my king. Cam Williams is the only contestant to compete against two mercenaries in a season. She won both times. Brad Fiorenza had a six elimination win streak at one point. What's crazy is that this spanned over 12 years. He won two eliminations in the duel in 2006, won two eliminations in the duel two in 2009, and won two eliminations in vendettas in 2018. Devon and Jose are the only contestants to be eliminated three times in a single season. Rachel Robinson, the winner of the duel two, never actually won a duel. Tony Raines is the only player to win a challenge spinoff but not a challenge season. Hunter Barfield is the only winner to never receive any prize money. Sarah Rice didn't win any money after Banana took the whole thing in Rivals 3, but Sarah did win her prior season with Jordan and won some cash there. TJ, all those things you said about all the other partners is true, but this guy's belittled me, put me down, slut shamed oh me, gosh. and also threatened my life and my family's life. I'm keeping the money. It took Sarah Rice, Carla Maria, and Paula eight seasons before they secured their first win, the most seasons it has taken for any female winner. It took CT nine seasons before his first win, the most for any male winner. Camilla, Jose, and Lolo Jones all debuted on a challenge spinoff series before competing on the challenge. Anissa has played the most challenge seasons without ever winning at 14 seasons. Danny, ja Danny Jameson from the real world Austin was going to be a potential face of the challenge franchise in production's eyes. He competed on six seasons and went 0-6 in eliminations before the challenge finally gave up on him. Both Franks that have competed on the challenge have won. Kenny Santucci and Derek Kaczynski both have three challenge wins, and all three of them are the same, as they were on the same team each time. Johnny Bananas has never placed higher than Derek on any season they played together in. Bananas has never won a season when Tyler Duckworth was competing against him. Every person that has won a final with Johnny Bananas, whether it being as a partner or a teammate, has won at least two seasons of the challenge. Both women that won alongside Johnny on a solo format season have only won one season, though. That season. Get me out of this thing. Oh, you don't want to stay in it for no, a while? No, I don't. Bro. Give me a kiss when there's no cares. Oh, no, oh, God, sir. Oh, it's not cheating if they can't see. Dude. Of his 20 seasons, there were only two that Bananas didn't go into an elimination in, Inferno 3 and Rivals 2. Coincidentally, they are the only two seasons that Bananas made the finals in but didn't win. The first time an opponent legitimately beat CT in an elimination, not a DQ or because of his partner, was the Free Agents Puzzle Pyramid against Bananas on his 10th season. Spoken in Australia. Touch? What? Jesus The correct answer is English. <laughs> that was sad. All three of Darrell's rookie partners have won the challenge. Aviv Melmed, Carl Maria, and Amber B. Only Aviv won with Darrell, though. Adam Royer and Jackass Smith are the only players in challenge history to be undefeated in dailies. They're both 1-0. They were not partners, by the way. Tyree Ballard has played on six seasons of the challenge, is 0-5 in eliminations, and has never made it past episode 5 on any season. Anissa and Paula have faced off against each other in eliminations five times. Paula has the upper hands being 3-2 against Anissa. Landon has only competed on sequel seasons, the Inferno 2, Gauntlet 2, Duel 2, and Fresh Meat 2. 
On both of the dual seasons, the second place guy was Brad, and the second place girl was a rookie who has never appeared on the show afterwards. The rookie team won on Gauntlet 2 and Gauntlet 3, but of the 15 winners, only two, MJ Garrett and Tori Hall, were actually rookies. Despite the idea that rookies are always ganged up on in the beginning of seasons, The Island, X's 1, and World of the Worlds 2 are the only three seasons to not have a rookie make the final. Mark Long and Theo Vaughn are highly regarded challengers, which even them having two wins under their belt, but are both 0-1 in eliminations. Big Easy beat Kenny in the 40-yard dash preliminary trial for fresh meat. Bananas has won the most seasons out of any player by a long shot with seven, with the next closest being CT and Darrell with four each. Of all winners that have won three or more seasons, only two have won an elimination on each winning season. Jordan won an elimination on all three of his winning seasons, and Bananas won an elimination on all seven of his winning seasons. Not counting redemption or exile wins, Bananas has only won eliminations on seasons he went on to win, and has never won an elimination in a season that he lost. On five of his winning seasons, Bananas won the final elimination. Jordan won four-ish eliminations in his three wins, and Bananas won ten eliminations in his seven wins. Compare that to CT, who only won two eliminations in his four wins, and Darrell, who only won one elimination in his four wins. Two. Two nothing. Four arms getting tight, huh? Yeah, I only got one. Imagine that. Wes and Derek's crazy pole wrestling elimination was intense enough as it is, but at the time, they were both tied for the most elimination wins of all time, raising the stakes even higher and cementing it as one of the greatest eliminations of all time. The Extreme Challenge, which was season four, was the last season that didn't feature anybody in the final who had been to a final before. Battle of the Bloodlines, season 27, was the last season that didn't feature any prior winners in the finals. Both times Ashley Mitchell won the challenge, she went home basically immediately the following season. Yeah! Now that we're done going over the facts about the show, it's time to move on to the facts more so about the players outside of the game, sort of. I'll be going over controversies, bad things, and all of that sort of stuff, but I'm issuing a trigger warning right now because there are a lot of topics that are going to be discussed that touch upon pretty horrific things. Also, I won't be going over every controversy because there's just so damn many. With that being said, let's get into this part. Bear secretly recorded a sexual interaction between himself and Georgia Harrison, and he posted the video online without her knowledge. He was arrested for this claim in January of 2021 and is now 100% permabanned from appearing on the challenge again. Both Kenny Santucci and Evan Starkman are banned from the challenge after sexual assault allegations arose around 2011 for some things they did involving a toothbrush during the ruins. This is also the reason that some episodes of the challenge are absent from streaming services, particularly episodes from the middle section of the ruins. Kaylee Morris outed Natalie Negrati on social media before Natalie came out as pansexual. Theo Campbell, runner-up on War of the Worlds, about a year after the season aired, was left blind in one eye after a freak accident involving a champagne cork flying into his right eye, splitting it in two. Camilla Nakagawa, the female winner of Dirty 30, was banned from attending the reunion show for the season, most likely due to her obscenely racist remarks aimed towards Lyra Garrett during the season. However, she wasn't banned from the show because of this, as she came back for a Champs vs. Stars season after Dirty 30. But on the spinoff, she destroyed a lot of property and attacked a crew, <laughs> and attacked a member of the crew, which finally led to her permaban from the challenge. Nelson Thomas has been arrested for theft twice. Maddie Lynn was arrested for a DUI in 2019 and was originally supposed to spend over a year behind bars, but it was lowered to just seven days. Had she been forced to stay in jail for the initial sentence, she would not have been able to participate in Total Madness. Maddie is not the only person to get a DUI, though, as Tony, Brittany, and Kahuta have also gotten DUIs, and I'm sure many others have that I'm just not aware of. A rather sad fact, but MTV dedicated the challenge Battle of the X's 2 to both DM Brown and Ryan Knight. Both competed on the season, but two months after filming ended, DM lost her decade-long battle with cancer after it came back for a third time earlier that year, and Ryan Knight was found dead following a house party where it was determined that Knight passed from acute mixed drug and alcohol intoxication. Nia Moore has been banned from the show after she touched Jordan inappropriately without his consent during X's 2. Dustin Zito has seemingly also been banned due to a sexual assault charge, and even though he was later able to prove his innocence by using surveillance footage, it seems MTV just didn't want to deal with the whole ordeal, and he hasn't been back since. 
But to end things on a lighter note, this is probably not true, but it's rumored that Pauli Calafiore was initially going to be on Total Madness, but was pulled from the cast after failing a psych test. Like I said, it's probably false, but I still find it a little funny that that's what the rumor is. And there we go. That was a ton of facts, and I'm ready to be done. I will definitely be making other videos about these shows, but for now, this is the end to my Fact Marathon series. Thank you so much for watching if you're still here. If you enjoyed the video, don't be a weirdo. Drop a like or maybe even a subscribe since we're getting close to hitting 1,000 subscribers. If there are any big facts that I missed, feel free to share them in the comments so others can see. I was able to get a few of these facts by watching videos from Rookie Revolution, so if you like challenge content, definitely go check out his channel. He's one of the best in the business. And with that, we're basically done here. All that's left to be said now is go crazy, go bananas, but don't act like a four-year-old. Anytime that I don't have to drag a teammate with me, I'll be victorious. Man, just treat him a little better, you know? Never seen a four-year-old on this show before.